Good morning, everyone. My name is Audrey. I am Stitchy Witch 42 here on Floss Tube and over on Instagram. This is my channel about cross stitch life, the universe, and everything. And I have to start off today by saying I feel good. You know, not everybody says things like that, and not everybody has a reason to start out their videos like that, but I feel good. If you've been around for any length of time, you know that last year I had some health issues that I was dealing with. A year-long bout of appendicitis, and <laughs> followed that up with having my gallbladder removed. In January, Mark and I had gone out to dinner, and we were walking out from the restaurant, and I looked at him and I said, I feel good. And he goes, oh? And I said, yeah. I don't feel like I did before. I feel good. And he goes, well, that's a good thing. And I said, yes, it is. It's a good thing. Last week, I went to see my lady who cuts my hair. I see her once a year in February. I don't know how it, that turned out, but you know, I see her about once a year and it's usually in February. And we were talking and I was catching her up on all of last year and I said to her, I said, I feel good. And she stopped what she was doing and she looked up and she caught my eye in the mirror and she goes, I haven't heard you say that for a long time. And I was like, wow. You know, towards the end of last year, right before I actually had my appendix removed, I was starting to wonder if I actually felt bad or if that was just the way I was going to be feeling from now on. But after having the appendix removed and after having the gallbladder removed, <clears throat> I feel good. I can't stress that enough. I feel good. Mark had some friends that he'd planned to have come over this weekend. They were here on Saturday. So Thursday I decided that I was going to get in and do a deep clean of my living room. Because in my house dust happens a lot and I've kind of let it, I've just left it alone because I wasn't feeling good. But Thursday, I got in and I did a deep clean of the living room. I was moving furniture. I was doing this, that, and the other thing, cleaning until my legs and my feet and basically the lower half of my body said, we hurt. Nothing I could do about that. That part of my body just hurt. So I took a break. And then I went back to it. And when I started hurting again, I took another break. But at the end of it, I got the dust taken care of. I got things clean that I haven't cleaned in way too long. And I looked at everything I had done, and even though my feet and my legs and everything down below was hurting somewhat, I thought to myself, I feel good. I feel good. And that's a great feeling. So, last couple of weeks, I have been working on things, gearing up towards retirement. 61 days, people. <laughs> it keeps getting closer, and the herd of butterflies in my stomach keep rampaging around and making me go, are you sure you wanna do this? And yes, I wanna do this, but are you sure? And yes, I'm excited and just a wee bit scared, but it's a new adventure, right? And I feel good. Did I say that? So, I got a letter. I should be getting my Medicare card here probably this week. It might already be in my mail, but because of the road work outside, um, we haven't been having any mail delivered since last July. We have to go pick it up ourselves. And usually we go on Monday and Friday and pick it up. So it might be here. My Medicare card might be here. 
I need that to fill out the paperwork for my supplemental insurance because they actually request that number. I've got the paperwork set in to get the pension going. The last thing that I need to do is contact the people who run my 401k and find out about disbursements. Mark, Mark's company has a startup meeting next month in March and they have a finance guy that comes and talks to them. I asked Mark to set up a meeting for the three of us with the finance guy and Mark goes, well I can ask him questions and I said no. This is bookkeeper me needing to get the information for myself. Can you set up a meeting with me or do I need to find another finance guy to talk to? And he goes, I'll set up a meeting. You would think after 40 plus years he knows how I work. <laughs> but sometimes he needs reminding. So, steps are being taken. I got a really nice comment at work the other day because I work in a grocery store. I am a union associate. Our union rep was in the store and I was talking with her and I was explaining some of the steps that I've gone through. And one thing I told her was when I called to get my withdrawal card, they asked when I was retiring. April 27th is the date. They said quarterly billing goes out in March. Wait until you get your quarterly billing and then call in and request your withdrawal card because then they'll prorate my billing and they'll start the paperwork to get the withdrawal card. If they had done it when I had called it could have messed my last couple of months up. So I passed that on to the union rep. She was not aware of that. So now she'll be able to help people who are retiring. And so far I've been able to pass on the information that I've learned from going through this process to four people in my store. So that's why I'm talking about it here because somebody else might be going through the process of getting ready to retire and maybe that can help. I don't know. You never know when information that you have can help another person unless you share it. So I've been working on that. Road work outside. We now have a curb. And I'm looking at where they put the curb Okay, it now definitely defines where the street is at. And they have the curb here, and they've laid gravel where the sidewalk will be. And there's about a two foot gap between where that sidewalk will be and where the new fence that they put in for us is at. And I have all sorts of bulbs coming up out there. I've gone out and had Mark and Philip dig up what I wanted. And I asked Mark, I said, are they going to, and he goes, I said, are they going to leave that gap there? And he said, yes, that's going to be the green strip. So the next time I see the guys working out there, I'm going to have to explain to them that, you know, you might want to leave a green strip there, but unless you dig up all those bulbs, they're going to come back and I'm going to have more garden out there. Why couldn't they just leave my garden alone? <sighs> okay. Cross stitch. I'm going to stop here for a moment and I'm going to add some pictures that I posted on Instagram of where I'm at with my Alphonse Muka. So make sure that you look up and take a look at these three photos that are going to be coming up because one of them is what the pattern will look like when she is completed, one is where she is currently at, and then one of them is side by side, and then I'll be back.
Okay, if you look up on the screen, I've got my Alphonse Mucha sitting right there. And what I have been doing this past couple of weeks is the same thing that I was doing with the page up above it. Normally, when I stitch, I will do Sorry, I thought my camera had a hiccup there. Normally what I'll do is I'll take a color and I'll work all the way across all four pages. What I have been trying to do is to start where my uppermost empty spot is, take that color and work down and out, and then do the same thing so that I'm filling the area in coming down this way. This is actually two pages that I'm working on. These right here are the start. This line right here is the start of the second page. So I'm working across the first and into the second page and down. And I don't know whether I'm going to work down when I finish this page or if I'm going to work across all the other three and finish this row before I move down. So I've been spending time in the morning working on her. Um, usually, usually before I go to work, I will curl up in my chair for half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever I have available, and I will spend some time on her. So I'm happy to see progress happening with her. On my Instagram post, I said there's a little point of dark stitches there that is actually the start of the bottom scroll work down at the bottom of the page. And I'm excited to see that because it means I'm getting closer. It's a visual that I'm getting closer. I know I'm almost there, but you know, you know how it is. You're working on a big project and all of a sudden you sit back and you look at it and you realize you really are getting close. I am. I'm hoping she's done this year. Um, I want her up on the wall. I want her up on the wall. So, other things that I have been working on. I don't know if you noticed, but Thing is back here. He's holding up my FFO. He's so proud of himself that he could be helpful. But he's holding up my FFO. This is my wonderful helper thing. And this is one of my 24 Bats in 2024 projects. And I finished it on a Valentine chocolate box. It was just a couple of days before Valentine and I'm walking through the store, I'm walking down the aisle with all the boxes of candy and it dawned on me they're usually pretty nice boxes. So I grabbed this one. It's a nice size. It had a liner in it, so I don't have any chocolate stain in there. I used the wrapper that was up on the top as a template and I cut out a piece of craft paper and simply glued that in there. So now I have a storage box that I can use. I didn't have to do anything on the side because it's already pretty. And I just sat down and added a piece of batting to the top of this, cut my fabric out. I ended up putting it lower than I thought I would be able to because I cut the fabric too short down at the bottom. But Mark looked at it and he goes, it reminds him of Winnie the Pooh. And he said, besides, you have a balloon, and the balloon needs to float in space. So, I did it perfectly without knowing that I was. <laughs> but I think this turned out so adorable. I will use it for something, and in the meantime, Thing has been quite happy to have it back here with him. Like it's his Valentine. Or his Valloween. Hallow time? Yeah. Other projects. And there's a lot of them this week. So, I had finished 
my last project, which was Halloween Doodles. Dropping all the things. Halloween Doodles. And I decided to put that one up as a giveaway. And I went through all the comments this morning and Barb Bobbit at 68.98. I drew your name. If you will send me either an email, I have it linked down below, or a message on Instagram, it's also linked down below. I will get that sent out to you. Now I have to find where my piece is at because I can't find it. Pause for a moment. I'm back. Sometimes I forget that I'm a blonde and I out blonde myself. I couldn't remember where I had my bats. I put them in the roll, the project roll that Cheryl made and gave me. Because, yeah, that happens. I out blonde myself. So, there is my finish of Halloween Doodles on Instagram. I mentioned that I had had issues with Frank here, who is now and forevermore will be Ferret Face, because I stitched his head two stitches too far that way, and I adjusted the skeleton, but his hand would have ended up in the cauldron. So he was adjusted. There was two little star charms that came along with this pattern. Um, one will be going with the pattern to you, Barb. The other one, I gave Ferret Face an earring. But this was the fourth of my 24 bats in 2024 projects. That's the only one that I fully finished. And for anybody wondering, they don't have to be fully finished by the end of 24, 2024. They just have to be fully stitched. That's what I'm telling myself. So I started project number five. Project number five is one that I found at 123 Stitch. It's by Stitches and Style, and it's called Bats. And I had shared with you when I received this from 123 Stitch because I had also bought the suggested fabric, which is, which is a fiber on a whim fabric called Butternut Squash. And this is what it looks like. I have stitched one bat, I'm on the second bat, and I'm coming underneath here and I'm doing the outline for the word trick and the other side will be or treat. Now this pattern calls for Romy's creations, flosses, and I don't have any of those. Um, so I just went through and I found three colors that I liked and I decided that, you know, because the picture shows them stitched with a variegated floss, but they're stitched horizontally. I'm stitching mine vertically. And the three colors that I chose are Weeks Dye Work Dolphin, Weeks Dye Work Coal, and Weeks Dye Work Swamp Water. Think trolls. So I like the way they are coming out. I like the vertical stripe to these bats anyway. And yes, I purposely did stripes. 
I know that I've talked about the fact that I don't like stripy animals, but stripy bats? The vertical I like. The horizontal, not so much. But the vertical I like. So, this is bat project number five. Styles and stitches, bats on butternut squash fabric from Fiber on a Whim. And it is this yellow. It is that yellow. But I've been stitching on other stuff. Like what, you say? Like Teresa Kogut's Santa's Delivery. I pulled this out and I did some more stitching on this. I got all the black done on the boot, on the deer's face, the nose, the hooves. And then I came over here and I started stitching some of the yellow of his sack and some red on his stars. I'm not in any hurry to get these done. Margaret, who is one of the ladies up at Acorns and Threads, she has stitched all three of them and she bought the whole kit so she has them on the stands that they come in come with and if you did the jingle ball you could purchase that i did not all i wanted was the pattern and margaret got the pattern for me so that's where i'm at with this one and i am keeping it in a bags plus floss buddy I actually stitched this Yoda several years ago and then contacted Karina and asked her if she could finish it for me. And I like it because it has a vinyl pocket in the front, but don't leave your stitching touching the vinyl pocket. Put some paper in there to protect it so that if you accidentally leave it in the sun, it doesn't get stuck. All right, next project. I've been trying to touch a little bit of everything. And I find the cover page. This is Vulcan Calligraphy. Well, I know you're in here. Do, 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 do. Oh my god, where is the front of it? Vulcan Calligraphy. Live long and prosper. I am keeping this in a dot dot goose bag and I'm stitching it with the PR or the Silks for You PR 168 the beautiful beautiful cobalt blue oh look at that I have one needle stuck in it and I have one needle on the back who am I I wonder sometimes So that is two pages finished. I'm on the third one, and then there's a little bit of the, on the fourth page. I could sit down and stitch on this until it was done. I love it so much. And my plan is that when it is done, I will make it into a bell, bell pull, or I'll take it up and have JoLynn make it into a bell pull. I know how to make a bell pull. Sometimes I don't want to do the finishing. But I have to stop indulging in that because I'm going to be retiring in 61 days and worried about money and herd of butterflies in my tummy. It's a real thing. 
it is such a real thing. Okay. Next project. Scrooge and Marley. I am not a seasonal stitcher. I am very much the I will stitch on what I want to stitch when I want to stitch type of stitcher. But it's here in my basket and it's a single color. So here it is, Scrooge and Marley. I have been working on the R, extending this line down, extending this line down, and then I came down here to start Counting House because stitching lines was getting boring. Don't tell me you've never felt that way. But I like how this is coming along. I still look at it, and while I know that there's that mistake with the E, it doesn't bother me, so I can leave it. But this got some love. And this gave me an idea for something that I want to do for Christmas. We have a pencil tree. It's a five foot tall, 27 inch diameter pencil tree. But the stand is really ugly. So a couple years ago, my son and I just took a regular cardboard box, covered it with wrapping paper, making sure that the bottom side was completely open, and then made a hole in the center where the top flaps met and I can put that center stand through there and that box would hide the stand for my Christmas tree. And then I was stitching on this and I thought, I wonder if I could find some stencils. And I did. On Amazon. I haven't ordered them yet because there's no rush for them. But you know all the Christmas designs that you've seen? Hot chocolate or hot cocoa and Santa's sleigh and this... It doesn't matter what's on there. But I found... I was looking for something that would have like Marley and Scrooge or the Grinch. Because this is me. And I found some stencils that I liked. And I looked at the sizes of them and I went and measured that box that I have. And I think I'm going to make a wooden box to cover the base of my Christmas tree and stencil the four sides differently so that I have something nicer to look at underneath the tree. And it'll have Scrooge and Marley, and it might have the Grinch, and it might have other things. Who knows? But when I get started on working on that, after I retire in 61 days, I'll share it with you. Okay. There has been some more work on my Moon Phase bell pull. I am doing this on a 16 count chalkboard Ada. Yep, 16 count chalkboard Ada. I have been working more on this section of the moon down here, and it's been slow, but I've been getting it done. And I'm looking forward to having this piece done too. This will also be made into a bell pull. I know where Live Long and Prosper is going to go. I'm not sure where this one's going to go, but I'll find a place for it. moved it. The last piece that I have been working on, and again, if you've been following me on Instagram, you've seen pictures of this, I got to go up to Acorns and Threads. Oh, oh, I've signed up for my first post-retirement -retire retreat. My friend Linda, who on Instagram is AKA Van Mom, she was sitting at the table with us 
at the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit last September. And she was talking about this one-day retreat that is put on by Cynthia's of Bend on May the 4th. And I said, well, I'll be retired by then. I can go to it. So when she posted on Instagram that, it, that registration was open, I called and I registered. It's a one-day retreat in Bend, put on by Cynthia's of Bend. It's from 9 to 5 on Saturday, May 4th. Costs $95, and you get a project, lunch, and snacks throughout the day. And then I promptly went and told some of my friends, and I know three of them have also signed up for it, so I am looking forward to that. But in January, I went up to... I went up to Acorns and Threads for their acorn gathering and we were gifted with a lovely project called A Gathering of Acorns by Fox and Rabbit. I have seen photos from Margaret and Julie. They have both finished it as it was designed. And then there's me. <laughs> Someone had said at that meetup that I could do an Adams Family twist to it. And so I have. And then I was talking with my friends. You know, the last couple of videos I've done, everything has ended up on the floor. I'm just going to start throwing things down there because they're going to end up there anyway. There you go. Someone had said, give it an Adams Family twist. And I ran with it. I ran with it. I changed the house from being red to using muddy puddles. I double check on the floss, but it's down on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And I decided to play with the roof because the roof was supposed to be stitched in black coffee. Maybe. And I decided to just use black, but then I used the black coffee, which is around the window frames, and I stitched a line through the roof because I wanted it to look weathered. And then I went back in with the black and I did some just half stitches and some I did two over two instead of one over two like I'm doing the rest of this. I did the door in purple. I did it in It's on the floor, man. <laughs> Which is knickers. I'll list the colors down below. I stitched the woman to look like Wednesday in her Nevermore uniform. The basket of acorns that is off to the other side of the house, for me, is now a basket of skulls. Would you like to see what I'm talking about? This is where I am at. Like I said, instead of using the red, I've used the muddy puddles. And again, I did it vertical. It's the way I started. I realized that I... What gave me the idea for using the black 2 over 2 was this window right here, this frame right here. Because I stitched a whole section of the muddy waters, muddy puddles there, 2 over 2 instead of 1 over 2, because I'm used to stitching 2 over 2. And I didn't catch it until I was doing the framework of the window and I was realizing it was a lot darker and a lot heavier than the others. And I left it. Because this is Adam's Family-esque. The windows? I did a Smyrna crosses. Look at those, the basket of skulls. Is that not amazing? It, I love it. But the purple door, the Smyrna crosses, I've got Wednesday in her Nevermore dress. I've started coming up and I'm dealing with some of the plant. 
I'm playing with ideas of what to do with the plant. But I had said that what I wanted to do, where's the pattern at? Did I drop it? Oh no, I'm holding it. God, I'm blonde. There's a squirrel down here. And I want to stitch a thing. Because thing, right? So I drew a picture. I traced the little needle minder that Julie had given me, mini thing. I traced it to get a size. And then I came down here and I made a practice thing. And I'm going to show you my practice thing. Mark has given me some ideas on how to improve it. But do you see my practice thing here? This is pretty much what it's going to look like, but Mark said I need to work on the thumb because the thumb is too short. So, Adam's family-esque fox and rabbit, a gathering of acorns. Might as well throw them on the floor. Everything else is down there. <laughs> so I got some mail from Vicki, Stitch and Button. She had messaged me and said she had a pattern that she was sending my way. And it's called Halloween Arches. And she was sending it my way because it has bats. So I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to use this in replace of one of my other projects because I do have 24 of them and I do still need to get my, oh what's her name? She was at Stitch Summit, it's not Ink Circles, it was the other one, it is, oh brain work. My brain is shut down. <laughs> it just shut down. My brain shut down. And then I came back and I started talking to you. And I wasn't recording. Because my brain shut down. I had to go get my journal and look up my list of projects that I have in here. And the designer that I was trying to remember was Hatsuma Street. I still need to order her bat project. Everything is on the floor. But Vicki sent this one, and I think it is absolutely adorable. So I'm going to add it to my list of possible pieces to stitch. I do have 24 listed here, and I think... I actually have 25, so that would make 26, but I still need to get the one from Satsuma Street. And I've been going through and I've been putting a star next to them when I have finished the stitching on them. I asked Mark to go down to our local variety store and pick up some stars for me. I was thinking the small pack of foil stars, what he brought me back was this. And I thought, why not? They're big and they're pretty and I like them. So in my project book, what I am doing, when I finish the project, I'm putting a star here in the center. I like these pages, Chris. I really, really like these pages. She breaks it down so you have a place to put your project. The pattern name, the pattern designer, when you started it, when you completed it, fabric use, stitch count or size, then you can use put in floss use or substitutions and then stitch dates and notes. I like that because there's enough space down here if you wanted to add a picture you could. Um, with my Alphonse Mucha, as I'm doing page finishes I'm giving myself a star because it's a page finish. We need to give ourselves encouragement. And then in my project list here, which is actually my finish list, 
those are my four finishes that I've done, and I have one FFO so far. So, I have another project to add to the project bag of possible 24 bats and 2024 projects that I will be stitching on. Thank you very much, Vicki. I appreciate it. And then I finally got my order from the Stitch Me in this pretty, pretty bag. I ordered these back in November and I knew, as we should all know, if you're asking or if you're purchasing from somebody who hand dyes their own fabrics, it's going to be a three or four month wait. It's not unreasonable. But I went through and I think everything I got, nope, I've got some Luganas here too. This one is a 28 count Lugan, Lugana in Ice Queen. Lovely gray. I then bought Gray Magic, a 16 count Ada. I also bought a 32 count Lugana Cold Foam. That is so pretty. Bats would look so lovely on this. This one I love. This is a 32 count Lugana called Night Sky. And one of my favorite colors of hers. This is a 16 count Ada in Toast. And I love, love this one. And then she sent along some of her silks. I have not stitched with any of Brandy's silks. I'm an Ada stitcher for the most part. But she sent these colors and they are just absolutely lovely. I'm trying to get all five of them to fan out so I can show you. Absolutely gorgeous. This one is Blood Moon. <laughs> yes, please. Nebula. Beautiful dark blue variegated. Peacock. Imagine the colors. It's gorgeous. Witchy. And Guardian. Absolutely gorgeous colors. Thank you, Brandy, for sending those. I wasn't expecting them, but I will definitely be playing with them. So I think, I think that is everything. Once again, I forgot to bring something down to do a giveaway this time. But maybe that's okay. Maybe if I, well, when I retire and I can get my room cleaned up upstairs, I might be able to do more giveaways. We shall see. It's all on the floor. It's all on the floor. Hmm, there you go. I think it covered everything. Um yeah I feel good I do I feel good I might be recording another video either later today or tomorrow on my paper crafting um, I've got two up on my folio style journal and I am quite tickled with the number of views that I've gotten from those because my channel is mostly cross stitch and not everybody wants to get into paper crafting but yeah I've been working on them I have ideas for things that I want to do I'm making bits and bobs to go in them and I have all these ideas and I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate working on some of those ideas 
and record it at the same time because I've never really been much of a tutorial style recorder. So it's making me try to figure out how to do things differently. So this video will be going up today and there might be another one later on today or tomorrow depending on when I get around to it. I think I have shared everything with you that I wanted to share today. Barb Bobbitt 6898 please contact me via email or Instagram. Give me your address so that I can get Halloween doodles out to you. And until we meet again, my friends, live long and stitch on. Bye-bye. This is the view that nobody shows you. The mess that is left over after you record. Things just sitting up there laughing. And I have a mess to clean up. Yeah.